Oh my god, what are they doing? What is this? I'll be able to do this too? Sure, you two can stick your hand into the summer uterus <laughs> or whatever that, that thing is. I sense a, a lurking darkness in this relationship that will eventually turn wholesome, as things do now. No, but don't lie, you tried it. <laughs> We've all tried it. <laughs> We've all been there. We've all tried to do our Kamehamehas. Yeah, no, that's not how that works. <laughs> as badly as we wanted to. Episode 6, Discord. Oh no. To become one. Tell me, is that you, Dad? <laughs> Do you know who I am? Yes, oh. it is you, my son. Oh, Hitoshi. <laughs> I never thought the day would come when I would have the chance to see your face again, my son. It really is you, Dad. No one could ever mistake that ridiculous accent. It takes a lot of concentration to head up a seance. A lot of concentration in this special leaf headband. Well, he was from New Jersey in America. Foreign languages are automatically translated. Oh, oh that explains everything. Sold. I'm sold. Oh, hey, Hitoshi. How things been going? <laughs> we did that one thing that was popular on TV back then. Would you do it for me one last time? The Macarena. It's Macarena. I know this is a Japanese show. <laughs> Dad? That was the cheeseburger tornado. I feel like I was close. Closer than I had any right to be. I know there's a fortune in there. You're dead, so you don't need it. Uh, let me see. Where would this fortune be, exactly? It's 13 letters of the alphabet. Now I remember. That's where it is. Channeling the Taco Man or whatever. Like cheeseburger fighter, tornado, yeah. Special moves. Oh my god, he's just- He's got such a stacked arsenal! I feel like the kids at My Hero Academia could take a few notes from Reagan's book. Reagan's over here with these epic moves like Salt Throw and Cheeseburger Tornado. Meanwhile, Deck was working on Full Cow and Finger Blast. I also appreciate the fact that Get a Job, You Lazy Bum was way more than the 13 character limit. Did you just take him down? Yeah. Took him out. But it was all in self-defense. <laughs> He did have a knife, though. Defense, huh? Oh yeah, this is relevant to Mob, having just obliterated that kid. Is it okay to shave off someone's hair? Yes. Rip off their clothes? Destroy yep. their pride? Make yes. them lose their friends? And yes. completely demolish the school they go to? Obviously. I think that's going a bit beyond self-defense. <laughs> I disagree. When you feel threatened, you must crush the enemy completely. Obliterate them in order to be free. I don't want these powers anymore. It's too much. He's opening up. I nothing else. But I think they're quite useful. I don't know if Reagan has the skills. The clients have been helped with those powers. I don't know if he's equipped. Although he's right. Maximize your potential. You do that, and you're gonna be just fine, Mob. That's such a huge vote of confidence to believe in Mob that much to basically tell him to take the limiters off. What I got from that, forgiving the fact that he just is not aware of whatever this demon is lurking inside of Mob that seems to be not him, is just him having a lot of faith in this kid. And there's a palpable danger to telling someone that, right? Because to let someone like fly, you know, to let them really put themselves out there and really take chances and really push themselves means that they're going to end up in some weird situations. When I was working as a stockbroker, I had this way larger than life boss who was just super charismatic, but also just unbelievably brutal, terrifying. And he was really harsh on the people who worked for him. But he was also really great at sort of knowing where the line was. And when things got really rough and people had their crashes, he would be there and be extra supportive when it counted. And one of the things he would say in moments of like extreme anxiety or moments of self-defeat or things not going through, he would look you dead in the eyes and say, you're going to fuck up. Fuck it up real bad, take a minute to regroup, pull yourself back up, and just get back at it. And that would be followed with optimism and big picture thinking. Like, it's just a matter of time before you crush it. As long as you keep going, that was the crucial thing. And even though saying it out loud, it seems sort of simple on the surface, I don't know, there's an energy behind it that I really like, and a perspective that is really important. Mob is, like, dealing with just an overwhelming number of questions in his young life. And there is a lurking danger that I feel Reagan is not taking seriously, not because of neglect or anything like that, just because of ignorance. Like he just doesn't have any way of knowing. And Mob is probably going to have some really terrible moments that to him are going to seem like the end of the road. But I feel like to the viewer or to people who actually care about him and, and know who he is, and you know, he's genuinely a really sweet, conscientious kid, is going to be all right and will probably be able to navigate situations the way he needs to. He's closer than he knows already. I completely lost to that shadow leader named Hanazawa. But the guy who bested him is from Salt Mob School. No Growing way. a name. That strong? Becoming a legend. It was you, wasn't it? You caused the supernatural stuff at Black Vinegar. Uh. Yeah, he is going to end up being popular, but not for the reasons he wanted or expected. And see, where other people see, like, glory and coolness, Mob sees, like, danger and darkness. What about your master? Oh. Well, actually, I don't sense anything from my master. Yeah, he knows, That's right? His powers He's aren't psychic. totally onto him. Spiritual. 
Interesting. That's a cool way of phrasing it. Let's go on a date after this. Huh? <laughs> Coming on strong. I like it. Yeah, I lost to him. That guy had some seriously nice muscles. <clears throat> Handsome and humble. Do not involve him in this. Be gone. Look at this older brother stuff. Musashi's the man. You were picked on by the guys from Black Vinegar Middle School last week, right? Well, that was for mobs trying to keep a low profile on all this. I'm glad you asked. It's not bad for a start. But I think we need something with a bit more- God, this guy's like, I got eye bags like me. If the student council could find a way to reprimand them, I think we'd be able to create a more peaceful school environment. I have to make it a more comfortable place for my brother. He's really looking out for him. Let me present my credentials. Awakening lab. Awakening lab. Yeah. Sounds like he's got me confused with my brother. But that's going to get his attention. His brother's also on a journey. Man, do I know the feeling too, like... This is a rough one. There's a legit pain from working really hard and like building good things about yourself and knowing your good traits, yet not being able to take any satisfaction from them. To take a guess at why that happens in people though, I would say it's probably when there's a major deficiency in one area that is a threat psychologically. I've definitely had that experience. And to be honest, I feel like I'm sort of dealing with this right now where I feel like as great as things are for me, there's a weak area of my life that is like this deeply rooted issue that I'm kind of stuck on and is sort of pulling everything else down. In Mob's brother's case, if I had to take a guess, it's an issue of feeling weak and vulnerable, having escaped from a situation where he was essentially helpless and powerless, basically at the mercy of bullies, until he was saved by this strong figure, and that strength became, you know, a point of fixation of something he lacks and like a very real danger to his life. And perhaps even more significantly, his self-identity. And for me, I think it's issues of my own self-worth when it comes to love. But if I'm going to take a guess at a solution, even though it's tough being sort of like wrapped up in it right now, I would say that it lies in pursuing that line of thought, but recognizing that the thing you're focused on is not really the thing that matters. So for the brother, it's really important that he sort of regain that feeling of power in his life. But it doesn't at all have to be related to psychic abilities. There's a lot of ways he can feel powerful. In fact, I think he's already sort of seeking that out with the whole student council thing and looking after mob. He's just looking for anything that can give him a sense of power or feelings of security or feelings that he too can be the protector, that he can keep his loved ones safe, that it's not true that at any time people can just come in and dominate him. And he will find that it's just not going to be at this very eccentrically dressed man's lab. And for me, it's not going to be about success in any one relationship. It's not going to be about whether or not the thing right in front of me works out. It's going to be how much I can take the situation and find out what the root of it is. Like, what are the things that I'm not confident enough in to the extent that it makes me feel vulnerable and that everything is unbalanced and from there there's basically only one of two ways i can see it's to question and challenge those beliefs because there's probably a lot of things wrong about the way i'm thinking about them subconsciously or internally and something more exciting for me to think about is to like conquer them through action like to look at this area where i feel i don't have anything to offer and like crush it and be able to offer that basically using every dissatisfaction every fear as an opportunity for growth and as like a beacon to aim at there's a bit of a cycle happening where i keep ending up in the same place but each time i grow more resolute in the idea that like i don't want to run away from it i want to like run forward fully into it and do my best to like fill those gaps and rise to the challenge and let that be the focus rather than the specifics of the outcome or the details of my immediate situation. It's more about who I'm becoming and where I'm applying my energy. And likewise for the brother, there's a lot of good he can be doing and I feel like he will do, but he's gonna have to make a few missteps along the way. Tell me, take a look. What is it? Another Esper? No. I just thought this guy had a really unique hairstyle. He does have a really unique hairstyle and he also has balls on his chin, like many characters in this show. Loitering, huh? I guess even people like you feel like doing that. He's literally you. waiting for a streetlight. <laughs> you consistently seem to play the minor role and let others take the spotlight. Stop acting like your brother. What does that mean? <laughs> well, his brother's anything but average. Hey, Captain! Kageyama's down! <laughs> he ate it again. Oh, I'm fine. Nice drive. I think you're starting to build up some stamina. <laughs> oh, they're so supportive. <laughs> That's excellent. I feel like a lot of people would be snobby in that situation, you know? Oh. What is that? How am I supposed- Okay. I'm undefeated. I'm undefeated. That's another disqualification. This place? Yeah, he went after all. I call it the Awakening oh, Lab. It's a legit lab. <laughs> Alright. I've hired the front runners. It's a lot of dedication. Of neuroscience and engineering, and we do research here. Can we do some research into why there are so many people with balls on their chins? That's an adult Esper. What is this feeling? Oh, like? is this the... I have a feeling like this will be a villain. I feel like that's the guy with the disco face in the intro. Standing 
before you is a group of real this guy looks like best genius hard to bring together I'm going all out. wow i mean he did it though that's cool ignite Ign there we go oh, it went out oh slow down there bakugo though i'm wealthy it's just family money i did nothing to earn it <laughs> that's Really refreshing, actually. I just want to become an Esper myself, so I funded this research facility to see if I could make it happen. That's the reason. I love the honesty, though. If he's though. able to achieve that goal, I'd be interested. Right, they have that in common. I don't know, I love that guy. Like, it's sort of weird, but it's fine to be selfish. It's fine to have bad traits, even. I think one of the main things that creates sort of an off-putting feeling in interactions is a feeling like there's deception. Like, the attempt that's being made of a surface portrayal does not actually match what you're sensing underneath. That raises red flags for all sorts of reasons. Like, one of the best tools of disarming people is just to be self-deprecating in, like, a pleasant way, you know? I don't know, I feel like I very rarely had negative experiences when I admitted negative traits about myself. I feel like I've had much more bad experiences sort of posturing or, like, grandstanding or claiming status or something like that. Student council again, huh? Make sure you don't fool around too much. I don't feel like this guy fools around that much. I feel like he barely sleeps. You haven't even hit a test score of 70 yet. Are you he looks like Ida with long hair. You have no talent at all. His brother looms large in this household, I see. This room, though. The only silence I have is my bed of trash. Oh. Look at this dude. He can't even help himself. But it just bends on its own. <laughs> Meanwhile, that kid at the academy is like... Using every ounce of his effort. <laughs> My farts spin things too. Oh, come on, stop that. How does that work exactly? You should really try to be more like Ritsu. Yeah, I know. It's so delicious. It's so delicious that like the irony, the misaligned desires, it's too real. Kageyama, good morning. President, what's going on exactly? I need you to help me fill my brother's giant shoes. It's a girl's recorder bag. And what would you presume is inside of it? A girl's recorder, recorder. I guess. no. Too easy. That's correct. Oh. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm confused. There are trashy students here who are classified as delinquents. The student council needs to get rid of them. We didn't say get rid of them. Onigawara, the thug delinquent. <laughs> oh, he's framing him. That the praise others lavish upon you doesn't actually fit who you really are. Oof. Come on. Yes. You got another perfect score on your test? Good job. He doesn't care about the perfect score. He doesn't care about being super talented. Wow, they just... Wow. Okay, <laughs> they went a little overboard there. You got some good muscles on you, Onigawara. He's even training this guy. Damn it. He just can't help the magnanimity, or whatever that word is. You may feel wrecked now, but you'll feel amazing later. <laughs> is this is a man of conviction. He truly believes it. Himself. So you should change in the same way he's hoping to. Bring it on, dude! This is great. This is like gonna end with this guy being just amazing and joining the body club. Strong mind and a strong body. The body club, like, sort of already being where everyone else is trying to be. Now, now, please calm down. We got them right where we want them. Now's You've the time cheapened yourself. Desk. What's the matter, Onigawara? You seem out of breath. Oh no, he's turning his life around. He's joining the body club. They were all inside Onigawara's desk. It's such an obvious setup, though. Deny what? What are like, you Like, they just became so much worse than everything they were Who the hell complaining just about. Said that? You were going to lick them to get your sick kicks when no one was looking. There's still time to redeem yourself. Apologize! He's already guilty in the court of public opinion. Whoops. My school bag. I left it wide open in my locker. Nice, Kageyama. You even put some in his How bag. How foolish of you this. to not anticipate this bizarre recorder scheme. So finally, the the recorder liquor. He needs the body club more than ever right now. On this day, after two years of hard work and dedication, new low. Tenga Onigawara's perfect attendance record was finally broken. I mean, who cares about that? That is record. There's a lot worse things happening, but okay. What happened to me? Yeah. What am I doing? Yeah, you're on a path. I, I get it though. I have psychic powers. There you go. Uh, step. Come on. Hey! You're taking a step. If it isn't Mob's little brother. I feel like there's insight incoming. Don't waste your breath. Unlike Shigeo, I don't have any special psychic powers. Really? Are you sure? What a coincidence, because neither do I. You might be wrong. Take a look. What in the world? Wait, what? Is he actually a power? Mm -hmm. What's that? Hey, it's our old friend, Religious Slimeball. Wait, but he sees him. Wait, he sees him. That means he has powers, no? That's an interesting development. Here I am going on and on about him not having powers. 
<laughs> Maybe it does. What a twist. All right, this is a very long time coming, but it's time to react to the ending. I've seen it, obviously, a couple times now, and I like it. Very stylish. <laughs> I like that it focuses on... Why did I just blank on his name? Damn it. It is very Onizuka-like, too. Especially this part. <laughs> the crouching cigarette. He's getting ready. Starting his day. Don't forget to water the plants. And my favorite part's coming up. We are gonna walk down our balcony, go out into the world, making Japan look beautiful, even though it's in sepia and weird animated style. And here it is. This is what matters. Seeing this beautiful kid, this beautiful soul, just needs a warm hand on the shoulder. Off on another adventure. Hell yeah. Regan, that's his name. So what if the brother t does develop psychic powers? Whichever way it goes, I feel like this episode cuts especially deep. There's something really existentially raw and threatening <laughs> about it. I feel like personal narrative is so important. The way we sort of mentally write the story of our present and also our projected future. There's this really common sequence that leads to like this sort of mental circle trap where there's like fear, you know, there's like raw fear about oneself and one's place in the world. Am I ever going to be able to get what I want in this key way? How can I ever be satisfied without that? And from that point, a bunch of things happen. Like one, things that are going well are not going to have the same emotional weight as a threat that feels catastrophic. So the emotional turmoil that develops from having this terrifying weakness or deficiency, self-perceived deficiency, can't be like rationalized away with, well, look at how good this is going and look at how well this is going, even if that seems to be a logical approach to it. It's like if you're in the middle of the ocean and there's a giant hole in your boat, you're not going to get any satisfaction from the weather, if you get what I mean. And so what it feels like is the only way to go from there is to grab on desperately to whatever will seemingly fill that proverbial hole. But that goes all types of wrong because one, because the things that are going well, because the, you know, the great things about ourselves that we've built are not really giving us any of that emotional validation or satisfaction in that moment of like panic will discard them to grab this thing which always will make you worse off it leaves you in a worse place because the truth of the matter is probably the best thing to focus on is not the circumstance anyway it's like what are the underlying things that drive the panic in the first place and that can be an emotional endeavor but i think actually it could also be an action endeavor it's just that the action has to be more self-directed or be about things that we have more direct control over for example if there's a deficiency in the romantic arena of one's life or an extreme loneliness or feeling like one has no options you know a common reaction to that will be to fixate really intensely on one relationship because the way you built it up for yourself is that this one relationship determines absolutely your success or failure romantically for the rest of your life you know that's sort of the way like it gets structured emotionally and so from there you've wired yourself to do anything to preserve that relationship because it's like a life or death thing including discarding the things of your life that actually are really going well and are strong and would be of more value if you didn't have this deficiency and so while i think there's nothing wrong with trying to like make the relationship succeed or like do well at the relationship the thing to avoid is ceding the things you have control over for the things you don't have control over so like if you have something good you don't throw that thing away in the hopes that it will make the relationship better because ultimately the outcome of the relationship is not solely in your control. What is in your control is your actions. And so instead of like sacrificing to the relationship deity, hoping that they, you know, grant you their blessings, maybe a better approach is focusing on actions that are totally self-directed and totally within, within one's own control that would like contribute towards sending the message that everything's fine. There is no deficiency. I can like crush it. And weirdly, the place I sort of keep arriving at mentally is the idea that the only way through situations like that is actually to strive for perfection, to sort of control for the variable of chance. It's like if I measured up in every way I wanted to measure up, then it's not me for sure. If you measure up to yourself and your own image in every way you can imagine, there's sort of no going beyond that. And if things don't work out, then there's a, a grand comfort in being able to distinguish between the two. And actually what I found from thinking about it that way is things end up weirdly working out better than if I was only thinking about the circumstance and trying to sort of grab onto it without doing sort of the underlying work and measuring myself up to my own standards and expectations first. That was a huge all over the place ramble. Long story short, the secret for Mob's brother to gain satisfaction in his life is not weird recorder scams.